scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ is this king of glory he said the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle but he is king of glory praise the name of the lord and so there are two keys listen i made up my mind as a believer that my life will command such levels of results that will bring glory to the name of the lord i made a vow and a covenant with my life that I will not just be an explainer. Creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. They are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us in that we are being called the sons of God. It says, Now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. Who is this King of glory? the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle amen who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty he is mighty in battle amen for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever Jesus came there was a feast in cana of galilee are we together and then the bible says that they were serving wine and wine finished imagine with me for instance that this were a feast and in the midst of guests and dignitaries very important personalities the wine finished so there was a serious confusion there was a a very a very serious situation that would bring shame and reproach within that feast and then mary led a few people to jesus and he told them fix uh, fill six pots with water and he said fetch it and take it to the rulers as they moved it turned to wine when they gave the rulers and they took it and said why would you do this to us everyone brings their best wine at the beginning of the feast and now you have waited until we have taken this old wine and then you've brought this new then the bible says this beginning of miracles jesus did in the presence of his disciples he says and he manifested forth his glory he manifested forth his glory in your excelling is the revelation of the glory of god in your prosperity is the manifestation of the glory of god in your walking in divine health in your enjoying long life are we together now in the manifestation of dominion the dominion power of the spirit over situations and circumstances the beauty of god's anointing upon your life the multifaceted dimensions of his grace is walking through you when this becomes your reality you become like 
Paul and Barnabas, who they call Zeus and Hermes, they said you are no longer humans because this kind of result is as if you are not living within the same sociological context. There are possibilities that we must capture into our lives. Creation is waiting to see whether God lied or not. And our lives will become that canvas that will paint accurately the excellence of God or otherwise. As for me, I have made up my mind that in my lifetime he will be glorified. In my life, be glorified, be glorified. In this place, be glorified, be glorified. You get the glory, you get the praise. You'll take the honor. Hallelujah. And so there are two keys. Two keys from scripture that can allow a believer's life and a believer's experience to be a revelation of the glory of the Lord. Key number one, light. Isaiah chapter 60, where we started from. We'll read the first three verses, please. Isaiah 60 one to three the bible says we can we can use kjv now thank you thank you very much arise shine it says for your light is come not your light is available it's always been there but the day it comes to you arise shine to the degree to which your light comes and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Is the Hebrew expression tohu wabohu. It talks of confusion and chaos. And then the Bible says, but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon thee. If this is for you, say amen. amen. Verse 3 is where I find it very interesting. You will no longer look for them there will be such a compelling dimension of the light and the power of God through your life to the degree that Gentiles shall come. It's one thing to look for them, but it's one thing to become the light and Gentiles shall come to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising. This is what happens when light is at work in your life light talks of spiritual illumination colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 paul was praying over the church in Colossae, and he began to cry unto god and to be des to desire that they be filled with number one the knowledge of his will number two all wisdom number three spiritual understanding just give us verse 9 colossians 1 and verse 9 light light in Ephesians chapter 3, Paul himself began to speak to us on the basis for such, is, such level of spiritual dexterity. Ephesians chapter 3, please. Let's start from verse 1. We'll read verse 3. Then we'll jump to verse 9 and 10. For this cause, I, Paul, are we still together this morning? The prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 2. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four in few words, verse 3 now, 3 verse 3, 3 verse 3 please. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote a four in few words, please continue until I prompt you, then we go to verse 9. It says, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, verse 5, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men. It says, as it is now revealed unto his whole beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things in Christ to the intent. This is why this mystery was given. To the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places by be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. The manifold wisdom of God. Are we still together? Yes. 
The Bible says that there have been things that are hidden for our glory and they are being revealed through these mysteries to the intent that we become a glorified body. We are able to reveal the excellence. You know what it means to excel? I hope you know God excels. He says, oh Lord our God, how excellent. His name is not just great, the name excels. To excel means to surpass ordinary standards. Are we together? Oh Lord our God, how excellent, he says, is your name. The first key is light. You are only able to reveal the glory of God in and through your life, your business, your family, to the degree to which you contend for definite levels of spiritual illumination. Let me tell you this. There are a class of demons that are called rulers of darkness. Their dominion starts everywhere there is the absence of light. 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 Believers must contend for light. What is light? Knowledge. The body of spiritual truth allocated for the victory of the saints is called light. We must obtain grace from God to contend for light. I love the name of your church. Word alive. Not just word around. Word that has been quickened in your spirit. Are we together? Listen. You must have such passion for spiritual knowledge. He says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Listen carefully. Which is build you up but to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. The word of God is able to build. It is able to give. We discussed yesterday Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, popular scripture. It says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance. Ignorance is deadly. Ignorance is terrible. We rise in this kingdom on the strength of the lights that we possess. But the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It is important that we sustain the ability to contend for light. You may have heard me say this, that every level of result that we seek to produce in this kingdom, there is a, there is a dimension, a body of revelation that governs them. If it is speed you want in life, there is light that governs speed. If it is prosperity, genuine wealth and prosperity you seek, there is a dimension, a body of light that controls it. If it's health and wholeness, there is light. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4, please. Give us amplified. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's start from verse 3 and then we'll go to 4. Habakkuk chapter 3. It says, God approaching from Sinai, he came to Teman, which represents Edom, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. It says, his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Read verse 4 with me, please. One, two, read. And his brightness was like the sunlight. Uh-huh. Raised. The power of God hides in his light. When you find his light, you also find with it his power. Everybody say light. It's important. We must take away spiritual ignorance in our lives. You will never be able to be a manifestation of the glory of God in and through your life in darkness and ignorance. Light. I continue to study scripture and glean from the wisdom of those who have gone ahead of us as a search to find light, high level spiritual illumination that is able to take every darkness around your life away. Listen to me. If these doors were shut, all of the lights, beautiful lights within this auditorium were off. If you own the light of your phone, it's light but not enough to turn the night here today. Can I tell you this? There is a relationship between darkness and weeping. There is a relationship between darkness and weeping. There is a relationship between light and joy. It says weeping endures for a night. For as long as it is night in your life, weeping does not come to an end. You want weeping to come to an end? 
you must obtain the light that can turn night to day. How many of you have been to stadiums where there's a crusade? Sometimes it can be 2 a.m. in the night, and yet because of the level of light in that stadium, you would think it's afternoon. He made two great lights. The first to rule the day, the second to rule the night. Until those lights are at work in you, you will never have dominion in the day and in the night. Number two, very quickly for this service, the second key that we need to activate and to reveal the glory of God in and through our lives is called faith. Faith. John 11 verse 40. Faith. It takes faith to command results in this kingdom. John 11 verse 40. John chapter 11 and verse 40. Jesus said unto her, Did I not tell you and promise you that if you would believe and rely on me, you would see the glory of God? There is a relationship between faith and the glory of God. If you will believe, then you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, then you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, then you will see the glory of God. In Mark, Mark 11 now, I think, verse 20. Let's start from 22. I hope I'm right on that. Yes. Mark 11. Jesus is teaching on faith. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Fathers like Papa H Hagen would teach us that the accurate rendition is have the faith of God. Verse 23, for verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Pay attention. And shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, then he shall have whatsoever he says. The law is in verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and you shall have them. You only have what you have received. If you have not received it, you can never have it. There is a difference between receiving and having. Hallelujah. So faith, what is faith? Faith, I define it as the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his word. The name given to that action of obedience that you take as a response to your conviction is called faith. Faith is not merely believing. Believing is part of the faith equation, but not the only. There has to be an action of obedience. Hebrews 11 and verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. He says, for by this law, faith, the elders obtained a good report. Hallelujah. Action of obedience. Action in line with scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. The chapter from whence pastor read earlier on, it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2 says all these blessings. How many? All these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. faith you have to learn to trust god not just to merely confess your trust bishop oyedeko will say faith is not just saying what god said faith is doing what god has said there is a doing to faith there is a believing yes but there is a corresponding action please look at me every result that you and me would command in this kingdom as far as the manifestation and the revelation of the glory of god is concerned will require faith if it be thou bid me come and he said come it was up to him to take that risk and he took that step of faith and he began to walk on water and even when he was about to sink Jesus took responsibility and lifted him up. There are many prophetic instructions that have come from your pastor as far as the revelation of the glory of God is concerned. If you are able to believe it 
and subscribe to the terms. Here is where many believers miss it in the faith equation. We know what we want, but we do not understand the spiritual conditions allotted for that result. A man, for instance, who wants to increase financially, and all he keeps doing is to confess and declare that in the name of Jesus, I am blessed. He's done it well, but not complete. You see, there are mysteries that connect to divine, to wealth and prosperity. For instance, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat, and the Bible says it tends to poverty. Next, he said, a diligent hand shall be made fat. Is that true? It says a lazy man will not sow because of the rain, the weather, and he will beg in harvest. These are principles that control wealth and abundance, for instance. There are people who want to see the favor of God upon their life. And the only thing they know about favor is that, oh, favor should come. I'm just, I declare favor. No. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 says, good understanding procured favor. It says, but the way of the transgressor is hard. There is a mother that gives birth to favor. The name of that mother is good understanding. There is also a mother that gives birth to hardship. The name of that mother is transgression. Are we together? When your hands are empty in the kingdom, there is an explanation for it. Lack and emptiness is proof that something is wrong. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. So when your hands are empty while you go, it's proof that there's something missing in your life. There is a dimension of the glory of God that is yet to be revealed. Are we still together? I'm saying this because when we begin to pray, your assignment this morning is to search your life and find out what level of the glory of God or what dimension of glory is yet to be revealed in my life. Do not become like Naaman. Naaman in 2 Kings chapter 5, the Bible talks about a great man called Naaman. A valiant man in army. So when it had to do with the matters of war and security, he was a veteran. But the Bible says he was leprous. And one day a little slave girl began to suggest to him that look, it is possible for you to be complete. It is possible for you to be whole. It is possible for your life to reflect the entirety of God's glory. And he said, how shall that happen? Come, let me take you to a prophet. And cut the long story short, he washed seven times. And the Bible says his skin became like that of a baby. Hallelujah. So I know that spiritually, you are doing well. Your prayer life is well. Your word life is well. But how about your finances? Are we together now? This service this morning is to challenge us to open up to receive all that makes for the full revelation of the glory of God in and through our lives. The wife of the sons of the prophet in 2 Kings chapter 4, she had sons. So she was not barren. Yet she was in debt. And her husband died. Only God knows what killed the man. Now the debtors had come to carry her sons. And she says, no, there is need for completion in my life. This morning, when we begin to pray, we'll be praying shortly. I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart when we begin to pray. And say, Lord, this area of my life you have brought, I have seen the revelation of your power. If it's prosperity, you have blessed me, you have shown me favor. But why are my children? Genesis 24 verse 1. Please read with me if you are a Christian. One, two, read. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. Uh huh. And the Lord had blessed him in all things. How many things? All things. It is possible for a man to be blessed in all things in all things don't listen to those sociological narratives that tells you once you're a human being there must be something wrong god can bless you in all things in all things so that your life becomes such a revelation of the glory of god your spiritual life is on fire you love the lord with all your heart your home is in peace 
reflecting the glory of the Lord. Your finances and your business concerns keep excelling regardless of the pandemic. This is what will compel men to say, Come on, is it that you are not a human being too? And you tell them, No, we are ordinary, but there is a power, there is a grace that backs us. How else will men see that you are not alone? They must see results that. If I tell you I'm alone standing here and I try to lift this and you see this side lifted too, it tells you there is somebody who is assisting me. Is that true? We must challenge ourselves that our results are ordinary. Is the reason why people don't give glory to God. Nobody claps for me for walking. It's human to walk. You don't need to be born again to walk. But when you begin to fly, it is unusual. Is that true? Both a driver and a pilot are doing the same thing, but at different levels. Is that true? This is by no means to demean. All of them have to do with handling and, and trying to coordinate the movement of an object. But the only reason why you seem to have more regard for a pilot than a driver is the dimension that they are holding. One is holding it in the air. One is holding it on land. Two people can be doing the same business. It's the dimension and the frequency of their operation that makes the difference. One is doing it on land. One is doing it in the air. Commanding results that humans should not produce. Are we together? It is only marvelous in our eyes when it is the Lord's doing. If it's your, if it's your doing, it is natural in our eyes. I came here this morning to challenge us to shake out of ordinary results and step into a level of results where your life becomes a scripture if somebody forgot his bible at home he will keep reading it when he sees you that means he left his bible at home he did finish his quiet time he was reading about the goodness of god and he had to rush for work and he's feeling bad that i left my bible at home as soon as he sees your life you're a continuation of his devotional he's studying you the excellency of the results that comes through your life that's what it means to be a living epistle. Believe what I'm telling you. I don't glorify sickness and I don't mean to, I don't mean to, um, to insult the efforts of government and all what we have done. You know, we've been plagued with the pandemic and people have fought and done all sorts of things. But let me tell you the truth. Um, I've made contact with more people probably in the last one year with all plagues and all diseases, not just COVID, enough to kill anybody who is in his right mind and living in the flesh. I'm talking of deadly communicable diseases where there are medical disclaimers to it. This is by no means, you see, we function according to different levels of faith. Don't stand before Pharaoh if you have not seen the burning bush. The condition to stand before Pharaoh is that you have had an encounter with the burning bush. I'm saying that there has to be something unusual about your life. Businessmen, hear me. For as long as you do business at the frequency of ordinary men, nobody will find a reason to sit down and honor God through your life. For as long as ministry happens at the frequency of men, just like church history said it should happen, There is a flight in the spirit i'm trusting that all of us will join this morning that in one week the results that your life will command can i tell you this do not let anybody deceive you that results don't matter the end of every argument is results and evidence a token of truthfulness results are proof that principles have been kept i hope you know that the glory of god comes as an attestation that his principles have been kept when his patterns are honored, glory. That's what happened in Exodus chapter 40, remember? The glory of the Lord descended when Moses built according to pattern. So when the glory of God does not show up in your life, it's a report card that you are violating divine patterns. If the glory of God shows up in your finances, shows up in your health, shows up in your life, it's an attestation, it's a report card that there is something about the patterns of God that you are keeping. 
and in the name of Jesus I'm praying for someone that everyone who has laughed at you before this conference wondering if you are really born again it is only your tongues people used to know that you are a Christian from today it will be tongues plus results dramatic results in the name of Jesus Christ let your light so shine before men that they may see let your light so shine before men unusual results extraordinary results unusual results look the testimony i i sat back while a brother was sharing a testimony of someone who connected online for the program i think whose mother was sick or so now imagine the revelation of jesus christ that that woman has is brought glory to the name of the lord but his results matter they are proof that you are doing something right the bible talks about the three hebrew boys it says these were men that the fire had no power over it is possible for fire to have no power over you are we together by the time you leave this service with a grace on your life and you get home and you see a text message waiting for you he says come and meet me tomorrow morning and you meet somebody and he says while we were sleeping the lord said this land you are seeing from here to here the lord said we should give it to you let me tell you this by the time you return back don't mind naysayers they'll keep saying what is there about land until poverty brings them to their knees most times people who don't have results are quick to criticize areas of their deficiencies It's only God that sees the heart. Oh. Men don't see the heart. They see the outward appearance. They want to see the word becoming flesh. The Bible says the word became flesh and it dwelt among men and we beheld. Come see a man who has told me. This was a woman who was a harlot. Everybody knew her. Now she sits with this prophet and in a little conversation, he turned her whole world upside down. You have five men that are not your husbands. The current one you are staying with is not your husband. Now she brought the issue of worship. I perceive then you are a prophet. After engaging him, she became an evangelist immediately. No Bible school. One encounter. And she said, before I go to Bible school, let me start preaching. That means she had the zeal to preach. She did not have evidence enough to convince her that Jesus was alive. There are many people who want to serve God. But the evidences that we bring are too small. The madman in gathering was an evangelist. He had not encountered the kind of power that turned that madness. Those demons kept prevailing. Imagine someone who would look at him and say, look at the God that claims that he is love. Look at his creation living under a stone. And I can imagine God saying, are there not people on earth who will change this narrative? Jesus walks and meets him and the man says, go, go, go. Have you come to destroy us before our time? And he says, leave him immediately. He went and brought 10 cities. Can I tell you this? When the glory of God is revealed in your life, the glory of God is also a crusade sermon. Gospel into food that is upon his plate. When you meet a man who is frustrated, Yes, you preach the gospel, but in addition, look what Jesus did. Every time he forgave sin, he did not leave the people in that condition. Your sins are forgiven, but to let you know that I am Abba, rise. And the man will rise. And people will look at it and behold the glory of God. From today, may your life begin to command results. In the name of Jesus Christ, from today, may your life begin to command supernatural results. And one of the things that we're going to be receiving today, in addition to faith, is this grace that can help men produce results. There is a grace for performance. There is a grace that can help man produce results. Let me tell you this. There are some possibilities that are not affordable within the realm and the world of men. If you ever see a human performing this level, this attaining this height and this level of results it is proof that god is with them rabbi he says john chapter 3 and verse 1 we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these signs and wonders except god be with him verse 2 no man there are things that men cannot do please hear me there are things that men cannot do 
there are things that men cannot do there are things only God can do and God has come to honor your praise many of you have come right from the ministrations even till today when I watch you celebrating and rejoicing I said no Lord you have to honor your people the kind of result that when someone laughs at you and says this your church you are always jumping and shouting and in two weeks you bring a result a dimension of grace you you don't have to be the one talking results have voices they can speak listen if you are always the one explaining and defending yourself is proof you don't have results Moses spoke for a few minutes and he said rod continue speaking he threw the rod on the ground to keep doing the speaking have you given your results voices to speak can your result tell men Jesus is Lord can your result tell men the glory of the Lord is real hallelujah I made up my mind that everything within me that can glorify God will glorify God I will not reject any good thing that comes from God that can make for kingdom come if it's prosperity Maranatha if it's favor Maranatha let it come if it's speed let it come if it's influence let it come I'm saying this so that if you buy if people have made it to reject anything any dimension of the glory of God you must embrace it today and say lord in addition to favor i need influence i need i need to be able to stand at the gates and speak and defend his majesty is god wasting your time this morning some of you have come here sick and now if you leave back and you say oh that situation that liver problem i came to church ah, what is there about church and you go to the hospital and the same doctor who tested you says come where did you say you went to you said do you know what a life i pass it every day say that's the problem your life would have been 10 times better if you ever entered it one day the next time you come you will see people waiting at your car and say please is there space can i tell you this nobody leaves what works nobody leaves what works in the where the carcasses are carcasses don't call eagles a mango tree does not have um protocol a mango tree does not go to a newspaper and say come to me it just produces big juicy the same tree you pass every day suddenly it begins to produce mighty mighty you know there's this mango i don't know what they call it this one that is like a human head one big mango are we together you see it hanging on that tree and before you know it you begin to come the same tree you ignored the same tree you ignored even jesus did not ignore a tree with green leaves jesus he came and said it looks like you have results when he did not find fruits he didn't advise the tree he cost it cost it every tree that does not bear fruit he said my father will prune god is obsessed with fruit bearing because it is how his glory is being revealed please hear me no matter what your endeavor is i like you to be angry with ordinary results i want to see the glory of god revealed in and through my life i want to see the good hand of god revealed in and through my life i want to see the power of god revealed through my life when i saw this my dear people dancing the kind of energy that they had that those those dance groups i said no these guys must be under the influence of a dimension of the holy ghost <laughs> if i dance like this they will take me to the hospital today uh, the energy it tells you it is not ordinary from today when people see your life someone will call you and say come is it that you are the only person in this city are you the only person what is all this one in my presence someone came and greeted two of us and gave you a gift and left me and you tell the person we are not carrying the same thing we are wearing the same clothes even if it's unco but you are not carrying the same thing on your head be angry with your current level 
and say, Father, there has to be something upon my life. This was a prayer I prayed many years. I said, Lord, I don't want to do ordinary ministry. And this is not just for the marketing of the flesh. No. I desire my life to be a testament of what you can do with a man and through a man. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? The name above every other name, what can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? This is the part I want you to sing with all your heart. You are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Let me share with you something on a lighter note. Years ago, when we would be traveling for administration, um, sometimes they would wait at the airport to receive me. And people have all kinds of ways that they receive me. Sometimes they bring children with flowers. Sometimes maybe trumpeters and all kinds of things. And sometimes I just wear my polo and a jean trouser with my earphones and my phone. And when I come down from the plane, you see the people looking around, where is he? They look at my protocol. They look around, and then maybe one person who knows me, when they start greeting me, you can see the shock and the disappointment. We've been waiting two hours for this thing. <laughs> and I look at them with compassion. I say, don't worry. Let's go to the stage. <laughs> it's not pride. Forgive me. Forgive me. I repent if there's any. It's not pride. But listen, what I'm saying is there is this treasure in earthen vessels. This is how people, sometimes when people believe to you, leave them all, it's a build up of your testimony. Don't stop it. Allow them to be done belittling you. And then they see what the favor of God can do in your life. And they stand and wonder and say, ah, my own tribe's man ignored me. This man we know that does not fear God nor regard man. Yet he came and blessed you. Something must be there in your life. I want to hear you and you say, come and hear what I hear. When you hear what I hear, you will become what I'm becoming. If you are not willing to bear fruit, let me tell you this, you will be despised in this life. I hate to say this, but the world we live in is a world that only respects results. Genuine results. It's an uncomfortable truth, but come to terms with it. If you do not have genuine results, consistent results the bible says gentiles will come to your light their kings will not come to your light they'll be they'll hear about you but they'll be watching but when your result becomes excelling and all surpassing one day even the queen of sheba will come to you O solomon and say we have heard of the excellency of the hand of god upon your life when you tell them you came from nazareth they will no longer laugh and say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I don't care whether your village is in the map or not. God can pick you from where you are and exalt you and give you a voice. That whenever people are talking of favor, if you are teaching someone on favor and after 15 minutes he does not understand, you just say, do you know Reverend Godwin Abba? He says, yes, say now, you understand what I'm saying? And the person says, I get it. They can, you personify a dimension of God's grace. God can give men speed. Well, I don't know Zechariah. I don't know all these guys. I don't know Elijah. Say, who can I find? And they just mentioned someone. He said, do you know how what are life members? You've seen what have, has happened to them in the last three months. Say, oh, you heard the story too. We've heard that there's, there's, there's some speed that is happening in this place. Isn't it amazing that as plenty as we are in this country, if someone steals in 24 hours... Everybody knows that there was once a thief. Newspaper, internet. It's not just for marketing nonsense alone. It's also for letting the world know that Jesus is alive. Are we together? Let's bring fame to the name of Jesus through the excellency of our results. That someone can kneel down at home and say, look at 
what this man's life is commanding for loving God is what I rejected God to look for. I rejected prayer. I rejected worship. I rejected integrity because I was looking for money and fame. Now, I've not found it. Here is a man with integrity of heart, loving God in righteousness and sincerity. You have given them a proposal through your life. It's amazing the things people leave God for, pastor. They will leave God in a heartbeat looking for promotion. There are people right now who will sit at the office of people who they believe can help them from morning till night. Even at a time like this when the word of God is coming. They say, no, 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 no. I will listen to it one day. I need a contract. And God is saying, stay. One thing is needful. Matter, matter. You are worried and offended about many things. One prophetic word from this altar can set your life on fire. And yet people will ignore it. So God needs to use you as a specimen to show people that Jesus Christ is not a nuisance to advancement. That Jesus is not a nuisance to civilization. That as a politician, you can serve God and rise through God. Hallelujah. Don't believe all that thing to say everybody who rises has, has had to have cut corners. No, there are, some, there are people who have not bowed to Baal. And yet with the dignity of kingdom integrity have risen. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.